What have we got here? Uh, just a couple of function generators. The, the one on the far left is a Tech FG502, uh, a simple function generator, goes to 11 megahertz. And then the one beside it is an FG504, that's their, their full featured one in that series. So the, the scope, or the, the, um, Oh, what's over here on the right? Yeah, so an FG502 and an FG504. The FG502 is making a one kilohertz square wave that goes into the trigger input, the, the trigger and phase lock input of the uh, um, FG504. And then we have the FG504 set in gate mode. So the, this one gates that one on and off. Okay. And you can vary the frequency of the... And you'll note that the pulse width stays the same, even though the frequency changes. And now let's do that again. I didn't zoom on the frequency there. Yeah, so the... And I got to... The, the bottom instrument, or the bottom line is the... Oh, is, I see. Is the FG501. Yeah. Or 502, sorry. And then this is the, the more full-featured gadget. But it does both gate and it does trigger. And then, okay. so at each trigger event, it just does a single cycle and stops. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I mean, it's, I don't exactly know what I'd use it for, but... It's kind of a cool feature. It's it's a nice, full-featured, no computer-controlled analog function generator. It sweeps. It does AM modulation. It does FM modulation. It does phase lock. That's the 502 uh, right there. The, the 504. 504. The, the 502 is a straightforward oh, yeah. sine, triangle, and square wave generator that goes from you know, a fraction of a hertz to 11 megahertz. Oh. And and they're all they're all built to work into 50 ohm loads. So the the output drivers are pretty robust. Uh, when you use them for audio, you want to normalize. It, well, it depends. It, it, how picky, it depends on how picky you are about source impedance for audio. But I have you know sor source impedance normalizer here. Hold, it, hold a it still. A couple resistors. Hold it still there. Hold it still. But it it just normalizes the source impedance back to 600 ohms. So if you're working on a, if you're working on an audio filter or something, many times they're dependent on the source impedance. Yeah. And 50 ohms is not what they're supposed to be driven by. Mm -hmm. And the reason Tech did 50 ohms is because it's a nice low number that you can make anything you want. Oh, and it's universal. I mean, resistors are cheap, and 50 ohm coax is dirt cheap. And since the signal generator goes to 40 megahertz, it actually starts to matter. So this particular instrument, you know, it has such a wide frequency range that it gets used for audio and RF. And since it's phase lock, um, you know, you can use it as a really decent signal generator, AM and FM both. Uh, if you have a synthesizer, so if you have something, some synthesizer that has hideous output, you can phase lock this function generator to it and make a fairly passable, you know, stable AM or FM modulated signal with it. Cool. Okay, now, what's, what's the equipment next door? We're not going to use that. This guy is a, a pulse generator. It's a 250 megahertz um, adjustable square wave generator, in effect. You can vary the pulse with, you, you can vary the both sides of the pulse at arbitrarily. And the reason I have it is for cable testing. I use it for TDR. Um, you, know, you can make a sharp pulse uh, and observe it with the scope. And those are the 475 is 200 megahertz bandwidth. So that's, what, five, five nanosecond rise time or something, or less. That's good. Yeah, it, it's reasonably fast. It, it's fast enough that I can see bad connectors and this and that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the network analyzer does the same thing, but it can see to three gear. I think the best. TDR I used, what was it, 11K? Yeah, they... Oh, it was up 5 nanoseconds. No, it was 5 picoseconds. Five, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You got me yeah, there, you didn't you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're only three orders of magnitude slower. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and we have one of those, too. So, as a matter of fact, that may be coming home with me. Okay, what, what's this other stuff? And then the next guy to the right is just a DM5, is, is an old DM. Old digital, digital multimeter. Meter. And they're really nice old meters. You know, if you're going to have a rack full of TM500 gear, it, it's really a handy thing to have a meter. And, and you look at these things on eBay, and they're cheap now. And then the gadget on the far and right and you got a power is a PS503, and you always put so them in the right side. So pretty good. This is the top of the line rack with uh, yeah. five instruments yeah. in it. It's state of the art, 1979. Great. Wow, <laughs> you know, when, when we were when we were Boy Scouts, this is the stuff we wanted. You know? That's right. And you got a what a 475? Yeah, 475 DM44. With um, the um, actually it came out with the, came with the out, accessory. Um, Multimeter and stuff. Yeah, on the top. DM44. 
Now, the 475 is what, a 300? 200. 200. Oh, it's a 200. Didn't yeah. they have a 475A? Yeah, the 475A was 250. But in trade for the, the, 200, in trade for the 250 megahertz bandwidth, you lost the 2 millivolt per division setting. So 5 millivolts per division was as low as it went. This one goes to 2. Oh. And I've had both instruments. I mean, I've had 475As. I just I didn't need the extra 50 megahertz of bandwidth. And for audio, for low-level audio and stuff, I really wanted the, the 2 millivolt per division. I thought they had a 400 meg in that chassis. No, the next one, the 485, is a 350 megahertz scope. Okay. But, but the bottle is little. It's this tiny little jug. Oh, yeah. And you know, I caled those, too. This, this particular instrument's got my cal sticker in it. You know, I saw this at a ham fair, and it had my sticker in it. Oh. I had to have it. Oh, you know? cool. So, so yeah, when that when that was a baby brand new scope, and I was a what's little what's the one in the twenty four hundred series that had the high persistence phosphor for the really fast bandwidth, uh, the last of the good analog. That's not the one I know. Uh, um, the the twenty four. It was above twenty four sixty five. It was like a twenty four seven. Yeah, see, when the twenty four series came out, I used to use those. They were great. Yeah, when the twenty four series came out, they offered me two dollars because uh, they're trying to push the early digital scopes on us. Yeah. And their single shot bandwidth oh, yeah, was, was five megahertz. Yeah. So I had to get this analog scope out. Yeah. But when when they offered me a buck and a half an hour less to move to Vancouver, I stopped working at tech. I see. So what are we going to do here for fun? Um, well. I think the pulse thing is kind of fun, but you got a nice HP generator down there. What's that? No, oh, the um, yeah, this one is a problem. Oops, Let's see. power. Um, this is the follow-on instrument to the 8640. So the 8642B was the, the synthesized, freakishly low noise, you know, very free, very low phase noise signal generator. But this one has a problem in the um, in the one of the counterboards. This is a good instrument to have for. Uh, yeah, it's, around, uh, it goes up to, RF it goes signal up to 2100 generation. megahertz, and uh, uh, the output's protected to 50 watts. It's got a load. Uh, there's a, a, a pin diode switch and a load. So if you happen to forget and transmit into the output, it'll it'll briefly survive. You see, it's upset because it didn't it didn't lock. But when it warms up, it'll work. 